I don't want to spend more time making my study materials than actually studying, you know? Give me a sec, but this book is like thick. Okay, I do actually have this document up on my Etsy shop. You guys can go ahead and check it out. Really the only way that I think you can actually gauge what you know and what you don't know in terms of your material. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Yes, I'm sitting on the floor. We are not going to talk about it, but what we are going to talk about is how to study for med surge and how to get an A in the class. I just took med surge. I just finished my third year of my BSN program at the University of Ottawa. Med surge was one of the classes that I actually took most recently alongside with mental health and other courses. And so I totally understand how stressful it can be, how overwhelming it can be. There's so much content being thrown at you. It literally seems like the world is going to end because you're supposed to know so much and how can you know so much you know so been there done that i totally feel you guys so i'm hoping that i'll be able to help you guys with this video quick disclaimer before we do get into it however this is what worked for me personally but i do strongly feel that there is something for everyone in this video and that the majority of people will be able to take something away from this video and will at least be able to take like a tip or two from me, hopefully. And the other disclaimer is if you've seen any of my other study videos and you might hear a couple things that are repetitive. And that's because I essentially use the same strategies for all my courses throughout nursing school. However, what's different for each course is kind of the approach I take for the strategies. So I take those general strategies and then I customize them to whichever nursing school class that I'm taking. So if you hear anything that's a little bit repetitive, that's why. But without any further ado, let's get into the tips on how to get an A in med surge. So first things first, what we need to do is sit down and figure out how we learn best and what kind of a learner we are. There are so many YouTube videos out there, there's quizzes you can take and whatnot that will give you an idea of what kind of a learner you are if you yourself don't even know. You can be like an auditory learner, so you learn best when you hear things. A visual learner, you learn best when you see things. A tactile learner, when you're hands-on. Those are just a couple examples. But you could also very well be a combination like you can be tactile so hands-on but you can also be visual that is the case for myself so definitely figure out how you learn best now i'm not saying that you have to know 100 percent the best way that you're gonna learn and retain information and that if you don't know how you learn best that you're gonna fail because that's not the case at all but i think with a class like med surge it is so much content it can get very overwhelming and if you know you're struggling to figure out why certain strategies aren't working for you or why things aren't clicking it might be because you don't know your i guess strong suit and how you study best and how you learn best if that makes sense so it's not to say that you're going to be disadvantaged if you start your med surge course not knowing how you learn best but i definitely do think you will have a little bit of an advantage knowing already you know i learn best when i listen to the lecture so i'm gonna listen to the lectures over and over again or whether you're kind of visual okay i learn best when i look at diagrams or when i look at my class powerpoints so that's how i'm gonna study you know what i mean so definitely knowing what kind of a learner you are will help you I just overall start off the course with a strong foot if that makes sense so my next tip is to use flashcards now before you come for me being like med surge is ridiculous there's so much information you're literally insane thinking i'm going to make flashcards hear me out hear me out yes of course there are people out there who can write out physical flashcards and that works for them me personally i don't have the time for that and i don't want to spend more time making my study materials than actually studying you know so i personally like to just make online flashcards and there's so many different websites out there that you can make your online flashcards on. I personally do a mix of my PowerPoint slides and then I also go in from the book and add in extra points. Maybe things that the teacher didn't touch on but things that I think will be important or maybe things that I didn't understand but that's what I like to do. I like to make my own flashcards and my own study set. I know that people are busy sometimes that's not realistic or some people are just not as comfortable with like being super tech savvy and you know making their own sets and stuff and that's totally understandable. So what you can do is you can try to find sets online that have already been created by other people that being said it might not be like 100 to a t when you compare it to your class powerpoints and the slides but it will generally be you know i guess like 80 90 percent of like the same material and especially for core concepts you can't really go wrong with that you know core concepts are core concepts it doesn't matter really whether you've written it or somebody else but i do think there is an 
element of advantage when you've created your own study sets because you can word things and explain things and kind of write things I guess that are very personal to you and you know you just kind of understand things that you write better than what other people write if that makes sense I mean I know that's not the case for everybody but that's definitely the case for myself and the reason why I think flashcards are so powerful is because it is a form of active recall active recall is really the only way that I think you can actually gauge what you know and what you don't know in terms of your material for some people they can just read their notes and they're good and they remember everything but for the grand majority of us especially for a class like med surge that's not so easy so active recall is really nice because you know you can see a flashcard you can see the term and you have to pretty much retrieve from your brain and from what you've studied whatever the definition to that term is you know what i mean and i also really like online flashcards because you can study on the go which is really nice for busy people maybe if you're a parent and you have kids and you know you can't always just like sit down in one spot and get the time to go through notes flashcards are really nice because you know you're in a parking lot waiting to pick up somebody you can do a couple cards you're in a waiting room at you know your doctor's office do a couple of cards and i know it seems kind of crazy like okay i'm not gonna be doing flashcards all the time i'm not saying that i'm just saying like online flashcards are very convenient for that reason and then it's active recall it's like a win-win situation my next tip would be to create some sort of a document like a concept map a study chart a cheat sheet anything like that where you can sum up the material you know so you can sum up the disease the signs and symptoms the treatment clinical manifestation things like that and then that way you can kind of compare them very easily with each other and it's pretty much just key points what you need to know I actually created a chart for med surge which was really nice and I have it on my iPad right now so I will show you guys so for an example so I started by sections so my sections in here were from different systems respiratory cardiovascular etc so I'm just gonna pull up a little like a good you know section so I just kind of made this chart so you can see over here it's sectioned off on the end endocrine system and we have like parathyroid hormone primary hyperparathyroidism a secondary hyperparathyroidism like treatment signs and symptoms oh treatment signs and symptoms and all that stuff and this document is 22 pages but it has like all the meat and the bones a lot of important information on here and i used this for the final exam and it was very very helpful i also find this particularly helpful if you're getting confused with certain diseases within a body system so for myself i was kind of getting confused with some of the neuro disorders i was getting confused with ms and gbs and mg and like all that stuff so having a chart was really nice because i was able to compare them right there and just quickly look at it quickly review it sum it up i would say 80 percent of my studying definitely does come from flashcards but the rest of the 20 percent is from you know like reviewing charts like this and a couple of the other tips that i'm going to share with you guys but if you guys do want i do actually have this document up on my etsy shop you guys can go ahead and check it out on the listing i have all the information of what kind of topics are mentioned in here and things like that so you guys can go and grab a copy of that yourself if you guys are interested my next tip for med surge is to use your mnemonics so mnemonics can be like either phrases sayings little rhymes things like that that people like to kind of make up to help them remember things they can be also you know pictures uh picmonic is actually a really great website obviously this is not sponsored but they have an app too and i actually downloaded the app you have a couple of things that you can access if you're not paying i did end up paying just because i found that it was very valuable and i benefited from it a lot but you don't have to pay you can still reap benefits even through the free version you're just limited to an extent on like what material you can access and how often throughout the day but that's all to say mnemonics are very helpful so for example i was getting very confused with the neuro uh, disorders as i mentioned so a really nice like little mnemonic that helped me for multiple sclerosis so ms was that what's affected the myelin sheath so myelin sheath ms you know the myelin starts with m sheath starts with s so myelin sheath ms okay and myelin sheath is affected in multiple sclerosis i hope i explained that properly but it's like i have not even studied that in months like i'm very much in summer mode and i was still able to remember that so it just kind of shows you mnemonics are very helpful and especially when you're like learning all these different conditions and signs and symptoms and whatever like it can be very overwhelming so i definitely recommend mnemonics so the next tip is also a form of active recall and it's writing on a whiteboard now what do i mean by writing on a whiteboard i have one right over here okay this is actually like i don't know what the material is called but we just got it from home depot and it's like 
that whiteboard material i don't even know but what do i mean by writing on the whiteboard what i like to do is think of a condition type 1 diabetes and then i'll write type 1 diabetes on the whiteboard and i'm gonna write out everything that i can remember and everything that i can retrieve from my little brain about type 1 diabetes so whether it be like what it is when does it start signs and symptoms etc etc it's really nice because if you get stuck on one spot you'll remember and then you know you can go back and you can look at your notes and then rewrite it all out again i really like doing this for things that i'm stuck on or if i'm feeling very overwhelmed when i'm studying for a class this is a really nice way to like break down the topics make sure i master it before i move on so i would definitely recommend doing that my next tip is to talk it out so you can definitely talk it out talk your notes out and the materials out to yourself for sure but what i find really helpful is talking it out to somebody or with somebody so it can be a family member who literally has no idea about any of this you can just give them your notes and be like okay i'm gonna talk about this that and the other let me know if i miss anything or it can be with like a classmate a friend somebody who's taking the class with you you guys can sit you can teach it to each other you can you know obviously ask each other questions about the topics and stuff like that and i find that to be very very helpful because if you can teach it to somebody else you can teach it to yourself and then you're pretty solid so my next tip is to do practice questions practice questions are very helpful and it gets you kind of an idea and a feel for what types of questions you're going to be asked on your exam sometimes you might be lucky to actually get a couple of questions on your exam that you had found online while you were doing practice questions so you can just literally search up for example diabetes mellitus and clex practice questions and a bunch are going to show up on google just click them and go through the questions i really like nurses labs they have a ton of different quizzes for all different like bodily systems they give you the rationales as well so basically the reasoning as to why a question is right or wrong and that is also very important that you guys read those and look at them because it helps you understand even if you're getting the question right it's important to look at the rationale as to why other ones are wrong but also as to why your question was right because you might know this question to be the right answer because of one reason but reason x y and z are listed in the rationale and you didn't even think of those if that makes sense so practice questions very very helpful my next tip is to watch youtube videos and particularly youtube videos on things that you're struggling with and then if you have extra time you can listen to youtube videos just for review and summarizing i find sometimes you don't always have times to like listen to all these videos basically start with listening to videos on things you're not sure about i really liked simple nursing's videos a lot of the newer ones with the infographics and the videos and the animations were, were very helpful so i watched one on Addison's versus Cushing's and then I had a question like really similar on my final exam so watching those videos are really helpful and then I also discovered Nexus Nursing just you know this past semester and she basically just has videos on all different topics different bodily systems and whatnot and it's basically her just going over practice questions she's gonna read the question read out the options give you a second to think of it and then she tells you the answer goes through all the options and explains rationales which is very very nice and really really helpful as well I actually like to listen to Nexus Nursing's videos with the practice questions while I would be working out so I can just like hear it in my brain and then go through the motions and think of things and stuff like that. Obviously not when you're doing like an intense workout but like if you're doing like some cardio like low intensity steady state cardio and stuff it's really nice. You can also listen to it at two times speed but things like that those are those were very helpful. I know Registered Nurse RN definitely has content too but I liked Nexus Nursing style a lot with the practice questions and I liked Simple Nursing's animations but registered nurse rn is also very helpful and so is level up rn on youtube so those are some of my favorite youtube channels to watch for nursing school content and my last tip and this is something that it is a textbook so i understand not everybody has access to it but if you do have the means to buy an extra textbook this is the one you have to get obviously i am in my bachelor's um here so i'm getting my rn if you are doing your practical nursing you just get the pn version but this is the saunders comprehensive comprehensive NCLEX RN examination book. It doesn't matter if you're not even writing your NCLEX for like another year or two years or like whatever. I would definitely recommend getting it. The minute you start taking like PEDS, OB, med surge, psych, anything like that, this book is going to be your best friend. They always have like new versions coming out every year too. This is the 2021 version, but there's a ton of different practice questions in here. I really like this too because it just sums up what you need to know for like each condition, um, nursing interventions and things like that. So let's say, for example, give me a sec, but this book is like thick, okay? For example, for anemia here, it says the description, it says the assessment and interventions, 
and then it'll move on to iron deficiency anemia description assessment intervention so it's really structured and then if there's any like key points they will highlight them there's also a lot of diagrams which are very nice and really really helpful they help you understand and at the end of each uh, like chapter section they have practice questions as well and you guys know how I feel about my practice questions so just overall very very helpful um, if you can spare the money for that um, but if not there may be cheaper alternatives out there like ebook or even free versions out there if you look but I just I just bought the book because why not but those are basically all the tips that I have on how to get an A in med surge I know it can be very very stressful scary and overwhelming but I promise you you got this I really hope you guys were able to take at least one thing away from this video and I hope I was able to help as I mentioned earlier if you're interested in getting that med surge little chart document that I made it's available on my Etsy link down below but that is all from me thank you guys so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. That's all from me and I'll see you guys in the next one.